real life street stars. We here with money, motherfucking move what it is. Hit. Believe hit. it, believe hit. it. Same. Hit. hit. You know what it is. Oh. Hey. You better wait know I hit him. Yo. Know what Same. Is. What it is, brother? What it is, man. What's happening, man? It's your boy Money Move checking in. You feel me? And what's going on? Hitting everything. Hitting shit. So for all these niggas, deaf, dumb, stupid, living up under a rock, man, tell these niggas exactly where you from. Man, I'm from the east side of Atlanta, man. The east side of Atlanta. Not east Atlanta, the east side of Atlanta. That's where I'm from. That's hard, man. <clears throat> The first time I came across you, bro, was just on YouTube. Like, you know how that shit would just pop up a recommended video? Yeah. I was like, damn, let me check it out. Fire right out the gate. You know what I'm saying? But I'm hearing that the song is like three years old. So yeah. how, did, how did that come, to, come about to where you push the song for that long and then it take off three years later? Um, it was just about like when I made it, I felt like it was a banger like that. I just felt like they were sleeping on it. You feel me? So I just kept pushing it. I dropped other tracks, too. I dropped a couple projects. You know, visuals. I was pushing other stuff, but I always kept that song. Like, I always pushed it every time I went somewhere performing. I always perform here, no matter first year, second year, third year. You feel me? Like, we always believed in it. So, like, yeah. And it's like it's brand, it's brand new now at this point. You feel me? But I got to ask, do you think artists give up on hits too easy? Because cause that's, some, that's some wild shit to keep pushing. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas have a hit and just kind of keep moving on and keep doing other shit instead of just pushing what really worked. I think about your vision, like as an artist, like I felt like with the hitting, for instance, like, yeah, for the years, it was, we was pushing it, but it was growing in one city. It's a big world, man. It's all kind of people, billion people out here. So if your vision far, I feel like you'll just continue to work it. You'll know if it's dead or not, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You'll know if the regular like, is outdated or whatever like that. But if you got some shit that like timeless or something that's can go for years, then you feel me? You'll know how to push it. Now, I want to know, because, you know, when I heard that whole, you know, off top, it sounded like a hit. You know, I'm looking like it needs to come to a visual, but I watched an interview, man, where that boy Mondo had, had, he, he had his doubts. I'm curious of what, I, I should let yeah. him speak for himself. I'm curious what doubts did he tell, did he tell you he had about that whole, it was <laughs> like, man, I'm telling that nigga, the <laughs> though. Nah, for sure, what man. What doubts that nigga have about that whole, that wasn't like, you know, we had cooked up a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of music, you feel me? And Mundo already had some other. He was like, man, I, when I made him, he wasn't there. I pulled up on him the next day in the whip. I played him. I'm like, man, I think this motherfucker it, you feel me? He like, nah, like, he like, it's hard, but like, man, you got some other shits that's going harder. Like, you got some other shits. I like, cool. And um, shit, I just went, bro. I was goddamn, like we said, it was out for three years, you feel me? So I was pushing it. Everybody. Wherever I went was like, man, that motherfucker it, like everybody. So that how I just was like, fuck that, I'm pushing this. And my boy was like, shit, you was right, nigga. Shit. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So how did you and Mondo meet? Because I heard him a lot in the song. And I thought he was on the song. And even I seen the promo, like, it was both of y'all on the promo. So it was like, I thought it was like a duo. And I'm pretty sure it is. But like, what's y'all relationship? Oh, uh, that's like, that's my brother. You feel me? Like. Blood can't make us closer. That's my brother. We known each other from sixth grade. You feel me? Like, I know his family. He know my family. We, like, that's my brother. So for us, it was like shit. That was the hardest shit I could do is make my song go on his beat. Like, you feel me? So that shit was like the move. That was the way for it. We plan to do it like that. You feel me? And I do want to say you in Dallas and you did have a, a Tony Romo bar. What'd you say? <laughs> Hey. We don't throw an interception like Robo. Fuck yeah, up. Hey. That's fucked up. Shit, y'all, y'all know what he do. <laughs> That's, <laughs> yeah, That's fucked up, man. He don't like that. Damn, bro. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, no, but then, but then you backdoored it with a song "Eat" with uh with Lil Dirt, which is also. It's like I feel like you got some courses down pat. Like, is that just? Are you just good at doing courses? Like that's what you do? Like, cause you killing the courses and you backdooring it with the nasty ass verses. Like, I feel like. I'm good at them, but I I really feel like I like the verses more. It's like, but I feel like it's a recipe that will make the head bar like will catch that ear like with them courses, you know. So I ain't gonna just say my recipe, but shit, I feel like I do got a recipe for them, yeah, for sure. Nah, for real, from uh from E to Big to hitting um to get a uh, money bag, Fujiano on it. Uh, how did that play come up? Was those your first? options as far as to come with the remix? Um, nah, I was thinking like, man, we went over the board a lot. 
but just with me and then with AE, me, Red Push, AE, well, we all just came up together. That's how it really came about, feel me? And, uh, yeah, that's how it came about. Now, how did you build the relationship? Because there's a lot of popping artists on that, on that particular song. How did that relationship happen? Uh, Boom Man. Boom Man reached out, and We sat down, you know, and chopped it up and just put it together like that. But straight up, yeah, like that. Boom. Like, he is solid. I rock with him hard. And uh, so where have you taken all your shit? Where have you been since you started your career and it's been popping? Where have you been most love? Um, Atlanta and Dallas. That's what, what for real, for real. On God. Now, we, I'm going to ask you a question. Now, say, you better watch your whole eye hit him. Yeah. What is the um, protocol when it comes to hitting another nigga hoe? Like, how, how do you move? How you move? What's the protocol? Like, the protocol, what you mean? Like, how to hit a nigga hoe? Right. How, how you saying? You, like, you saying that's what you asking? Yeah, me? how you do it? Like, I mean, shit, you just got to have flavor for one. A lot of flavor and shit. Really, that's it. That's so, it. You know, I, I got to bring it up, man, because this shit is trending right now. And I unfortunately watched the whole shit. So this nigga Takashi, right, goes on. Shade room and discuss the reason why he even snitched in the first place was because his, his OG was hitting his female. Does that give a nigga? Does that, nah, give, does that give a nigga any kind of reason? No. What? To, <laughs> what you saying? To, to snitch, like, to, hell to, nah. Yeah. What the fuck? Hell nah. Nah, man. There you go. There you go. Now, I, I do want to touch on Steel Pay, man, because what happens is a lot of artists, you know, do come up and you know, there's a whole movement behind them, you know what I'm saying, that gives a nigga, you know, that shine, that look, you know what I'm saying? Every nigga that gets in the rap, get into the, the music industry, is never by himself, it's always with a team. I definitely want you to give time to, uh, you know, touch on Still Pay, man, as far as the movement, as far as the family. Yeah, for sure. Well, Still Pay, man, that's the family, the game, like, the label, too, as well, like, yeah. man, like, that me, when you think about money move, you think about still pay. We got producers, artists, you feel me? Mondo, my dog, King of the Court, go crazy. Rubber Band Red, he go crazy. Producer and artist. We got E. Hayes, Cash Boy. Like, we going crazy. So, y'all tap in. It's a lot of heat coming from still pay. Tap in. Now, I do want to give you time to shout out your jeweler, man. Because, you know, when, when, it, when these lights come on, it hit different. You know what I'm saying? Just, even when the lights off, it hit different, man. Yeah, well, Go ahead, for sure. For sure, I gotta shout out Louise the Free man, right out this motherfucker in Dallas going crazy. Yeah. Got them. I gotta shout out Jury Limited, Wifey. I got them. Don't mix it, but yeah. I got yeah. it. And AM Customs. I can't forget about AM Customs. Customs too. The boy AJ over there. Nah. For sure. What is it about the Atlanta scene where it seemed like they're able to break so many artists nonstop, year in, year out? I think, like, to me, like, Atlanta, the place to be for the music. Like, far as this lane, to me, that's what I feel. It's like, I can't explain it. It's just going on. It's been going on for years. So, what it, that's what it is, I guess, you know? I can't explain it. It's just like, they love it there. That atmosphere is where you can make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to put you on the spot again, man. Uh, you know, you being from the A, you know, in the D, A is where you born and raised. Of course, the D, you got a lot of success out here. You were a student of the game, you know, you're a student of, of this music shit. Comes to the Dallas Boogie era against the Atlanta Snap era. Who do you feel? You're a person. Yeah, I about to say, but you know, that was easy for me. Yeah. yeah. Snap. Yeah. Snap. <laughs> snap. <laughs> snap. <laughs> that shit was a whole weight, but that was life at a point. And yeah. like, how many how many how many tall teeth did you have in your in your uh Man, I had tall teeth, big Jabot that I can't <laughs> fit now. I was rocking Throw the back. middle school Dickies. <laughs> Dickies, we back rocking Dickies. But back then, well, Dickies, Jabot's, Tall T, Jerseys, Big Polo, not the fitted rough one, Big Muffin, all that. Nigga. I, all, all, every color, every flavor. For real. Well, Atlanta, do you feel ever bring back the Freak Nick? It, it can't be how it was. From, yeah. But see, that would pass my time. I was so, young, not in social media. What I heard, it won't never be like that again. You know what I'm saying? Nah, for real. Not, not in social media time. Not in social media time. Mm -hmm. It's cool because, you know, we have you here. We get to shoot the shit, man. As far as, uh, you know, just your, a day in the life. As far as, you know, for the fans at home, just know what's going on with you. Kind of how you, how you start your day, how you end your day. What's a day in the life, man, of a uh, money move? 
Oh man, I wake up, pray, get active, man, hit the street, you feel me, smoke one, hit the streets. I might be pulling up to the studio, pulling up at the spot, you feel me, plotting, gonna make a move. That's the day for me at night. We popping out, shit, we at here or there. Going what? We popped out. Or oh, I'm in the yo, locked in for hours. So it's either, it's that every day, either or, either or, you know what I'm saying? But that's right. a day in the life for me. As a new fan, bro, I'm, I'm anticipating the album. Like, do you have a plan or an ETA on when the album gonna drop? Um, I ain't got a date for when the album, but it definitely gonna drop. It's really ready, but right now I'ma just keep dropping uh, singles, keep feeding them bangers, but it's definitely coming though, for sure. Like, as an artist, like, how many nights do you have to go out and polish music, push music? Would you say in a year? Like, how many nights do you say in a year you're going to have to go out and actually in the city and move around? I think it depends on what lane you is and musically. You feel me first? So, because some people don't even need the club and some people do. But for me personally, I was in the club, like, but I can't count how many numbers out of the, uh, how many days out of the year. I went to the club. Like how you say, shit was out for three years. Don't first two years when I, I was in them clubs every like night, every other night. I'm talking about like, boy, two, three, going all the time, nonstop, networking, shaking hands. Like, shit, I know damn near, boy, every DJ in Atlanta, no cap, because I done been in every club, like, multiple times. Like, we still popping out, pushing up on you. Like, you got to network. Who you know, that's it worth more than anything, you feel me? So. Uh, of course, we know, like, when it comes to branding yourself and moving around, that can be costly. How much do you think you spent promoting yourself and moving around the city like, every night? That's a, another number that I really couldn't just pinpoint, because it really, for me, been like investing that, and then, you know, life. All the, I'll take care of life and all the extras, investing in myself. So it coming back now, you feel me? So I put everything in it. Well, you know, it's a lot of cats even in this city that uh, haven't left the city. They kind of do their work around here, trying to blow here. Um, we have people like uh, Asian Dog, who was out here for a minute, not getting the buzz, and went to Atlanta for like a couple of months and then like took off. How important do you feel Atlanta being like Black Hollywood, the Black Mecca, artists that's outside of at a outside of LA, outside of Miami, or probably in Middle America, to go to Atlanta? To Build a fan base. I feel like um, that's absolutely like why, you know, Atlanta is how it is. It is like that to me. Like you say, the black mecca, like, hey, it's like Wakanda to me, you feel me? So, <laughs> Real, and it's like happening. everybody from all different places, every other city be coming to Atlanta to try to make their shit go, you know what I'm saying? Because this the, is the place where it can go, you know what I'm saying? You can make nothing or something in Atlanta. What's the hardest beat Mondo has slid you, man? Yeah, that's, that's definitely impossible to hurt. Yeah, but y'all ain't heard it, though. He said y'all ain't heard it. Y'all probably ain't heard the hardest one, but shit. I ain't got, yeah, bro. It ain't no favorite one, though, for me. For with Mondo, shit, it's nonstop. Been rapping nonstop on these beats for years, so. Shit, like, now, robot, really. Since we being real, how many times has Mondo gave you a pool beat? Yeah. I mean, that bitch was just pool, that shit. Oh, never. Never? <laughs> never. My boy don't give me, my boy don't make who beats, you feel me? He don't make, my boy, my boy going hard every time. Now, I might can't catch, be like, boy, I can't catch this one or something, you feel me? Oh, this one ain't for me, but it's never weak. Real, um, man, did, did COVID fuck you up at all as far as uh, quarantine? Did you learn any, any new trades? Anything about yourself while, you know, the, world, the world's locked down? Um, nah, COVID. They ain't fucked me up at all, you feel me? Yeah, yeah. They call it the pandemic. Hey, we call it the pandemic. Oh, my yeah. way, you feel me? Like, COVID, hey, besides all the, you know, death and loss and all that. Definitely. Feel me? But, nah, he ain't, he ain't fit me. I did learn, though, that the world could change. Like, you know, your life could be way Crazy. totally different. Oh, like, you feel me? Life different now. Niggas think it ain't went back the same since COVID. Like, that so. being said, as an artist, how, how well prepared Artists, you, do you feel the artist should be just in case some shit pop off? You know, niggas get money up front, you know, the front end, waiting for the back end. A lot of back ends got stopped. How prepared for life do you feel the artist should be, with, whether with investments, whether with just keeping shit aside? Well, yeah, 
I think you need to be well prepared. Like you need to be saving and be, you know, prepared for a rainy day because you always got to be ready, you know. So you definitely got to be ready for it. Now, in this industry, you get your ups and your downs. You go through a lot of bullshit before you get to the point where you actually start making sense for you in your life. What's the most fucked up thing that's happened to you, the most shiesty shit that's happened to you in your career? In my career? Shit. Uh, ain't nothing really just so fucked up or shiesty happened to me, really. Right. Like, in my career. Like, niggas be on that lame ass shit, that rap cap ass shit, but that shit ain't really... I mean, it's nothing to me, you know what I'm saying? So I can't really say no, just really fucked up ass shit that done happen, you know what I'm saying? What do you think, what do you think the percentage of rap cap is? Dallas is about... Shit, I feel like in Atlanta, like, boy, this city is the cap. We the city of the cap. <laughs> hey, in our city, you need to know how to cap. My nigga, if you want shit, you got everybody capping. Shit. Like, it's the cap, shit. It's, it's black it's Hollywood. <laughs> You feel me? Black Hollywood, bro. Right? Like, shit. He's like, you better know how to get them wig out there, motherfucker. For so. sure. And, uh, you know, Travis Scott, man, he was able to do a deal with McDonald's where they made basically the meal that he orders. Yeah, that was what, hard. Yeah, what would a Money Move meal be if McDonald's was a sponsor? That would be straight, though. That would be straight. Like, like, basically, what do you normally order if oh, everything is, is late? I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't eat McDonald's. There you go. It won't be shit. It'll be water. <laughs> It'll Same. be a glass of and water. And a probably. McGriddle, maybe, or some shit like that. What, what <laughs> restaurant would you uh, fuck with, like, to be sponsored? Or to be sponsored? Fast food restaurant or just any type shit? Any type shit. Yeah. I do like a. Uh, Pop of those or something like that. Just something I like. Mm -hmm. Since you went to A, man, I just as a curiosity, um, what Dallas artists be making noise out there that be that kind of caught your ear? Um, yeah. My dog, uh, Lil Ronnie, he had reached out to me. He pretty hard. I checked him out. Yes, man. Shout out Ronnie. Yo, my boy Body, he hard. Body. And, I'm going to somebody that might be, that's it right now, that I can think out the top. So you got a show in a, what, in a couple weeks out here? Um, yeah, on the third. On the third? Yeah. W what is a Money Move show like, man? Um, a lot of energy, feel me? Like, I'm going to be turned up, you know what I'm saying? It's love, like, I'll be ready to go up, you um, know? It's just a lot of energy, a lot of flavor. That's what the, what the show, like, experience. Would you say the shows are like more energetic since the COVID, or is, has it been more turnt? Because we just did the Young Dolph shit, and it was crazy in that bitch. Like, uh, yeah, because it's like it slowed down for so right. long. So you know what I'm saying? It's like now when you pop out and everybody can pop out, it's like supposed to be going up. Like, like niggas been waiting to go up. <laughs> Real, man. And outside of the music, man, um, as far as just your passions, what you would probably like to get your hands in, dabble in. Is there anything outside of music, you know, normally music is just a platform to get you to the next level. Anything you want to kind of get your hands in as far as business-wise? Um, outside of music or within music? Even within music, just you outside of, uh, you know, rapping. Uh, yeah, definitely, like, just producing. I want to get into more uh, producing records and also, like, you know, helping artists, really having a full label, help running, of course, with others. But that's, I definitely want to do more than just rap and music. For sure, writing as well too, like write music for other artists. I'm with that, cause I, got, I got a lot of diversity, I could do it, so I'm definitely. Trump say he trying to throw a little inaugural concert, he need you to come perform Hidden. Trump? He, Trump. Uh, he say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, man, mm, let them rock out alone, I'm gonna have to miss that one. Somebody fuck with Trump. It don't matter how much the bag is. They be like, nah. Trump giving them bags. I say that. He giving them bags. <laughs> For sure. You got any shout outs? Um, yeah, just, you feel me? Uh, shout out Still Paid. Shout out AE. 
Shout out OG Ball, my nigga out here, man. And um, shit, we going up. Shout out Shamar. Goddamn. Yeah, shout out Shamar for real. Yeah, for sure. Hey. And if anybody so, want to get in contact with you for any bookings or features, how would they do that? Um, hit the number in my bio. Hit either Red Push or Carry. And hey, that's what it is. I already know Money Move, man. Thanks for coming to fuck with us, man. We appreciate you. Diamonds hitting, chain hitting. Better watch your whole eye hitter. All that good shit. If you ain't on it, get the fuck on it right now. You are, you are a real life street star, brother. Believe, believe. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Move. Hey.